All right, welcome everybody. So uh, this is the sample final exam for Lehman College and this is for the course Math 104. Uh, here are the 15 questions from the review sheet and just for you to take a look at it just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, these are the questions I have in front of me, uh, one through 15. So make sure that you have this uh, sample final with you and uh, we'll go over each question together. What I'll do is I'll make three parts. So for the first part, I'll go questions uh, 1 to 5, the second part I'll do 6 to 10, and the third and final part I'll do 11 to 15. Okay, so let's look at question number 1 here. Let me fix the camera angle a little bit, and let's do this. So here, for question 1, uh, I just wrote it down for us, and what I like to do is I like to write some notes on the side for each question so you have a general idea of what's going on. Okay, so if we look at this question here, we have 7 minus 3x is greater than or equal to 31. So what do we want to do? We want to isolate x and express it as an inequality. So whenever you're playing this game of, you know, getting x by itself and there's an inequality, there's a question of when does the inequality symbol flip, right? And it only it will only flip if we multiply or divide by a negative value to both sides of the inequality. And we'll see this happen during the problem. So to solve this question, what would be the first move you're gonna to wanna to do? You're gonna to want to, we want x by itself, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is minus seven, minus seven, right? And now what are we left with here? Seven minus seven is zero. So this, we just get rid of this. The negative three x comes down. And here we have 31 minus seven, and that is 24. And here, I didn't show the inequality symbol yet, but the question is, does this symbol flip, right? Does it flip? And it's going to be no, because we didn't multiply or divide by a negative value. We only subtract it. So this inequality symbol stays where it just stays right here. Okay. What would be the next move to get x by itself? We're just going to divide both sides by negative three. And now here, what did we do? We, what did, we divided both sides by a negative. So here, this negative three divided by negative three cancels out and we just have x. Now this inequality symbol flips and we have it's less than or equal to negative eight. Okay, and that's it. All right, so that was the solution for question one. Uh, let's look at question two. And this question out of all of them, it's uh, a lot of work to do question number two. So what I did was I wrote some notes for us and let me fix the camera angle a little bit. Okay, that looks good. All right, so question one, we're done. Let's get this out of the way. Let's look at question number two. It says, write an equation of the line through the point three negative four and it's perpendicular to the line six x plus two y equals nine. So what is this question asking us to do? It's saying that if I have this point, okay, uh, where is this point three negative four? It's uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So my point three negative four is right over here. This is three negative four, okay? Now, there's this line over here that's somewhere in this plane, right? What we wanna do is we wanna create an equation that will intersect this line, but also hit this point, okay? So let's try and go through the general strategy of this problem. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna take this line that they give us, this six x plus two y equals nine, and we want to put it into the form of y is equal to mx plus b, okay? Because one general idea is when we're playing this game of creating an equation of the line that is perpendicular or even parallel, we have to understand that the lines, the slopes of parallel lines are equal and the slopes of perpendicular lines, when we multiply them, they have to give us negative one. So for this problem on your final exam, you're either gonna get a question that's perpendicular or parallel. It depends on however it's given. But here we have perpendicular. So the game is we wanna find the slope of this line. And if we to find the slope of this line, we wanna put this equation into y is equal to mx plus b. So let's do that. How would I get this y by itself? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna do minus six x minus six x. Then what do we have here? 6x minus 6x cancels out. Then what am I left with? 2y is equal to, now you could write 9 minus 6x, but remember we want the mx on the left side of the equation. 
So we could just write this as negative 6x plus 9. Okay, you don't want to write it as 9 minus 6x because you want it in this form. And notice that the mx is on the left side over here. So now that we have this here, what would be the next move? We are going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, now here, what do we get? We get y is equal to here, negative 6. What does this 2 do to each one of these? It's going to be negative 6x divided by 2, right? This will be negative 3x. And what is 9 divided by 2? Let's just leave it as uh, 9 over 2, okay? And don't freak out by the fraction. The fraction is not important. Remember we talked about we, wanna we want the slope of this line. And what is the slope of this line? It's this m value here, which is negative 3, okay? So we know that the slope of m1 for our first line has to be negative 3, okay? And notice that Let's follow this equation here. Negative 3 times some value of m2, um, m sub 2, has to equal negative 1. So what does m sub 2, this second slope of our second line, what does this have to be? This has to be equal to 1 over 3. And how did I do that? We just divided both sides by negative 3. Right? And now here, this cancels out, and now I have negative divided by negative is positive, and this is our m sub 2, okay? But what are we going to do with this slope? We're going to use our point slope formula, okay? And what is our point slope formula? It'll be uh, y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1, okay? Now from here... The point we're going to use is, this is our point here. Our point is 3, negative 4. 3, negative 4. And what is the m value that we're going to use? We're going to use this 1 over 3. Okay? If the question would have said, oh, instead of perpendicular, let's use parallel. Well, what would we have done over here? We would have wanted these two to be the same. If we did parallel for this problem, then I would have used negative 3. But because the problem is going for perpendicular, we need to have these two slopes that when they multiply each other, they have to be equal to negative 1. So that's why we're using this slope. And the question is saying it's through this point. So we're going to use these values, substitute them into the point slope formula, and it will generate the equation that is perpendicular to this line and has that point. So here, this will be my x sub 1, and this will be my y sub 1, and this is my m. So all you're going to have to do is literally just plug these values into this uh, formula. So here we have y minus, right, and what's my y sub 1? It's negative 4. So it's negative 4 equals m, what's my m value? It's 1 third times x minus x sub 1 is right here is 3, and yeah. Okay, so then let's keep going. So here, y minus a negative 4 becomes y plus 4 is equal to 1 third x. And what's a third times negative 3? This will be minus 1. Okay, and I can see that we're a little squished over here. Let me just finish off the problem over here. Okay, and then how would I get y by itself over here? I'm just going to subtract 4, subtract 4, and... Here we have y is equal to 1 third x minus 5. Okay? And this is it. Just this is the equation of the line through this point and it's perpendicular to this line. So geometrically, what does this mean? Let's imagine that this color here is this equation, right? If you were to graph this equation, um, it should look something like, let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know that the y-intercept is here, and this is the other intercept, and it's not really drawn to scale, but here, the line should be something like this, right? And then what does the other line look like? This line, it should look something like this, okay? And you see it's intersecting at a point, and this purple line, which is the equation of this line, has this point 3, negative 4. So that's just a general understanding of how to do this question. And yeah, that was a lot for one question, but hopefully you have a better understanding of it during your final exam.
Okay, let's look at question number three. Here, this one's a pretty straightforward question. It just says multiply and combine like terms. And here are some notes that we should have a general good idea of that if I have some x to the n times x to the m, it's equal to x to the n plus m. Basically, if we have the same base, we're just adding the exponents. So here, this is just three plus four is seven. Here, this will be two, uh, two x cubed, right? Because there's that invisible one there. And here, negative three x times four is just negative 12 x, right? And what's the general idea of combining like terms? Uh, we can combine like terms if they share the same variables with corresponding exponents. So here, how do I actually do this problem? Okay, let's just uh, write it out. Uh, we have to multiply this x squared times this x and times this three, right? So then how would I write that? It would be x squared times x plus three, okay? Then we also need to do what? We need to do the negative four x times the x and times the three. So then we're just gonna have negative four x times x plus three. And last but not least, we need to do positive seven times the x times the three. Okay, and then we're just gonna write this like this. Uh, seven times x plus three. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just knock it out. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times positive three is positive three x squared. Okay, negative four x times x is negative four x squared. And negative four x times three is negative 12 x. Okay, and let's see, seven times x is seven x plus 21. Okay, so when we get to this point, we need to combine all the like terms. And what are the, let's just go through them. X cubed, can I combine X cubed with any of these terms? No, you can't. Because what does it mean to be able to combine like terms? You need to have the same variable with the same corresponding exponents. And there are no other terms here with an exponent of three. So you can't combine it anymore. So we're done with X cubed. Okay, which other terms can we combine? We can combine um, this one and this one because they have the same variable with the same exponent. So what is three minus four x squared? I'm sorry, what's three x squared minus four x squared? It's just going to be negative x squared. You're just doing three minus four, which is a uh, negative one. And that's where that negative one x squared comes in. What can I do next? I can combine uh, this one and this one. And what's negative 12 x plus seven x? This should be uh, negative 5x and this 21 um, is you can't combine it with anything and this is our answer okay seems pretty straightforward let's go through the next question uh, question number four and this one gets a lot of people uh, mixed up with but let's go through it step by step so here it says combine and simplify using positive exponents only so this expression is simplified if we have positive exponents only. So how can we go through this? Here, these notes should be, uh, we should have these notes, but they will help us kind of go through this problem. And anytime if I use one of these uh, kind of rules, I'll point it out. So here, what's the first move we're gonna do when we look at this problem is, we have to take this whole thing and raise it to the negative three. So we're going to be applying this rule over here. Okay, so let's take a look. Here, we need to multiply, here, when I have a negative four over here, let me uh, zoom the camera a little bit. Okay, that's good. Here, there's a positive one as an exponent. So here, let's just try and go at it one at a time. Here, we're gonna do four to the one, and we're gonna multiply the one with the negative three. So this becomes four, negative four to the negative three. Okay, because this negative four stays and you're multiplying one times negative three. What about this one? You're doing negative two times negative three, so this is just a to the six. b to the three raised to the negative three is b to the negative nine, because you're just doing three times negative three. We're following this uh, property over here. And this one, okay, so now we're done with this guy. Now here, we're doing eight squared, a squared, b squared, okay? Because remember, there's that 
positive one exponent. You're doing one times two is two, one times two is two, and one times two is two, okay? But now, once we get to this point, let's just break this down into smaller steps. Notice that just this term over here, this is negative four to the negative three. But what does this equal? It's equal to one over negative four to the negative three. And that's equal to one over negative 64. Okay, so this becomes one over negative 64. And if you're confused on why this is, just remember that for this one, we're using this property here, some x to the negative n, what happens to it, we just put it as a fraction, it's one over x to the n. So this is just going to be one over, oh, whoops, sorry, that should be a positive three here. That's a positive three. So it's one over negative four to the positive three. And what's negative four to the positive three? It's negative 64, okay? Well, let's look at this one. What's a to the six times, and remember, we're multiplying, right? What's a to the six times a to the two? So a to the six times a to the two, that's a to the eight, okay? So this just becomes times a to the eight, all right? What about this one? b to the negative nine and b squared, so then let's write that here, b to the negative nine times b squared, and that's equal to b to the negative seven. Because here, what property am I doing? I'm adding the exponents, right? Six plus two is eight. Negative nine plus two is negative seven. You know, don't you dare multiply negative nine times two. No, 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 you have to add them. So this becomes uh, b to the negative seven, but what does b to the negative seven equal? That's equal to one over b to the seven. And we're following this property here. So this is um, one over b to the seven, right? And then what else are we left, to, left with? We're left with this eight squared. But what's eight squared? That's just 64, okay? So now we just have to kind of go through this and notice that like what goes on top? The top is going to be 64 a to the eighth. What's going to be on the bottom? It's going to be negative 64 b to the seventh, okay? But then how can we simplify this more? What's 64 divided by negative 64? Uh, remember, 64 divided by negative 64, it's equal to negative one, okay? So this becomes negative one, a to the eight divided by b to the seventh. And here, notice that we simplified it as complete as we could, and we're left using positive exponents only. So this is our solution here for number four. For this type of question, you should go through the textbook. I forgot which chapter it is, but practice the problems, okay? Let's look at the next one, number five. So write this one in, uh, write this number in scientific notation. So out of all the problems on your test, uh, like question three, that was an easy one. This one's another easy one. So how do I write a number into scientific notation? From decimal notation to scientific notation, you wanna write it in the form a times 10 to the n, where a is a number between one and 10 and n is an integer. So for this problem here, you just play this little game of moving the decimal, right? So if I were to move the decimal, how many times am I moving it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And notice that I stop here because what is this value going to be? It's going to be 4.05. And notice that this value is, be, is, is my a value and this number is between one and 10. So this is my number that's between one and 10 and it's times 10. Well, how many places did I move it? I moved it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I moved it nine places. So it's going to be to the negative nine because here this, you know, the, the number is very, very small. And when I move it to the right, uh, it's, you know, we're just moving it. So this will be negative nine. Okay, so we are done with the first five questions and I can't believe this was 19 minutes and 30 seconds, but okay, we'll, I'll make another video with the other questions. See you.